Hi everyone, Big Pauly back for another cinema trip. Oh yes, big screen baby. Yes, it's only half past 10 in the morning. What? And I'm going to the cinema to watch Buzz, Woody, Rex, Forky, and all the other Duke Kaboom and all the other ones. Fantastic. Yes, I'm going to see Toy Story number four. I know. Who thought we'd have a Toy Story 4 when the third one finished so perfectly? Fantastic. Right, let's not waddle on anymore. Let's get down to the cinema because I'm really excited about this one. Oh, yes, I've got a good feeling. I can feel it in my water. Oh, it's sloshing about. Ugh. Right, anyway, let's get to the cinema and, uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I'm not going to have this whole scenario to myself, am I, for this film? God, I hope not. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> Toy Story 4. Wow. Toy Story number four. Number four. Didn't Pixar once say they would never dive into doing sequels? They just wanted to do standalone movies. But we've had things. We've had the Toy Story movies. We've had Dory, Finding Dory. We've had Incredibles 2. We've had three Cars movies. So the question is... Could they still do more sequels to some of their great films? Some of them are standalone films, but could we get A Bug's Life 2? Could we get uh, Dory 3, Finding Dory 3, you know, Nemo 3, uh, or Cars 4, uh, or even A Toy Story 5? Fuck yes. Oh fuck yes, please. Can we have can we have a Toy Story 5? If Pixar are listening, if the why would the producers of Pixar be listening to my video? If the producers of Pixar are listening, do a Toy Story 5. <laughs> we never asked for Toy Story 4. A lot of us when it was announced didn't want it. It was like Toy Story 3 was a perfect wrap up to a perfect story, to a perfect trilogy. And then Toy Story 4 came out. Oh my God. Okay, basically I'm not gonna go into any kind of spoiler ter territory with this because you just need to go in and just you need to go in and marvel at it. You need to marvel. No, it's not marvel. You need to go in and watch it for yourself. Basically, it's Bonnie's first orientation day at kindergarten. And she goes and makes herself a toy while she's there. Unfortunately, this toy decides to run away. And so begins a road trip 
like no other road trip. A road trip where all of the familiar toys that we've known and we've loved since 95 all come together. Some of them go on the road looking for this toy in the hope of reuniting it with Bonnie. There are so many set pieces along the way. We've got carnivals and antique stores and oh, there's one particular scene just with Woody and this toy um Forky and it's just them two alone on a highway and it's mesmerizing just watching them and just listening to them the dialogue in the film is beautiful it's fucking brilliant there's no rehashing old dialogue. You know, if something comes around like to infinity and beyond, it's because that character is supposed to say that. But the, the all the characterizations and all the the dialogue that is written for this film is written from the heart and is written for this film, not to rehash the previous three films. There are a couple of characters we don't see uh, from maybe the, the earlier films um, but I mean I've just written down here some of the the voice artists we know all of the familiar ones Tom Hanks Tim Allen Joan Cusack they're all back all of them even Don Rickles bless his heart um, with some kind of like archive dialogue but it fits in perfectly some of these characters are voiced by Christina Hendricks Betty White, Mel Brooks, Apollo Creed himself, Carl Weathers, Keanu Reeves, fucking Jordan Peele. <laughs> I mean, I could go on. There are so many characters. There are so many voice artists and none of them get overshadowed. They're all on screen for the right amount of time. And the new characters that are introduced along the way, we've got a character called Giggle McDimples, which is fucking fantastic. It's bloody fantastic the way that she's introduced. Uh, Duke Kaboom, Keanu Reeves. Fucking hell, this character can have a movie of his own. Give him a cat fucking film of his own. He's so good. Keanu Reeves is so good in this role. He's dialogue is fucking perfect it's brilliant and during the film when they go to the antique shop gabby gabby and benson benson dolls but gabby gabby it's a little bit it starts off a little bit sinister and starts talk turning into kind of like a horror film which might frighten some very young children it's very creepy as well but you you learn to love this character, Gabby Gabby. And I was fucking crying buckets at the end of this film. And Benson, yeah, still creepy as shit, but less creepy towards the end of the film. Uh, Forky, oh my God. I can't remember the guy who um, voice artists Forky. Forky is the heart and the soul of this film. He's fantastic. For me, the standout moments, the standout characters of this film are Forky, Gabby Gabby, and Bo Peep. Bo, what the fuck happened to Bo Peep? Bo Peep stole this bloody film. Bo Peep resembles Tope bloody Lara Croft at some points during this film. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Oh my God. But yes, it's so beautiful. The film is such a beautiful film. A fourth film, and it shouldn't be this fucking good. It shouldn't be this fucking good. But it is a fucking classic. I apologise for my swearing, but that is how I... You know I swear. But that is how I feel about this film, and how passionate I feel about how good this bloody film is. My God. Oh, my God. I... Toy Story is always my favourite number one movie of all time. My favourite animated movie of all time. Uh, closely followed by The Lion King, the animated Lion King. Well, we haven't seen the new one yet anyway. But um, if I was to do a ranking of the Toy Story movies, yes, Toy Story 1 will be number one 
will always be at number one because it's the one that started everything. But Toy Story 4 will be second before, before the other two. This is how good this bloody film is. You'll laugh. My God, you, you'll laugh. There are so many humorous moments and so many classic moments. And you'll bloody cry. And it may not be as emotional punch as the end of Toy Story 3. But it's beautifully done towards the end. It's, and throughout the film, it's beautifully done. And Randy Newman, who provides the music. Yes, we get our familiar song. We do. <laughs> And I felt, oh my God, I felt so happy when that song came on. Um, but the score is amazing. The score is so beautiful. And we even get a new song from him as well. And even the human characters, such as Bonnie and the parents, so fucking fantastic. And the scene in the... Amusement ground in the fairground, the carnival revolving around a certain little girl nearly broke my heart. I was just fucking now. Uh, I was just oh dear me. Uh, yes, a lot of people moved. A lot of people left straight after the film. There was only about five or six people in there. As soon as the first credit came up, they left. The thing is, you bloody idiots. Stay right to the very end. Okay, there, during the end credits, all through the end credits, there are continuous scenes of like the continuous part of the story. So don't leave when the credits come up. And even right at the very end, you get the, the, war, the um, Walt Disney castle, and then you get the Pixar sign. There's even a scene at the end as well. It's a short one, but it's, it's very funny. And uh, stay right until the very end, until the bloody house lights come on. It's that, it's that fucking good. Yes, oh my God, I just can't praise this film enough. We didn't see this coming and I didn't think it would have this much as an, of an emotional hit and happy hit. You could take all of these Toy Story films, all four of them, and you could put them side by side and they could be all been made within the same year. They're that consistent. They're that consistently brilliant. And everything works in this film. The music, the cast, the, the action, the scores, the comedy. Ducky and Bunny are fucking hilarious. It's just so bloody brilliant. Even Mr. Pricklepants is back. Oh my God. Oh dear. Yes, if you are a fan of Pixar and you are especially a fan of the Toy Story films and you like it, fuck, you're going to have a ball. You're going to bloody love it. So everything is perfect. Um, I can't say that it wraps it up because the end of Toy Story 3 actually kind of wrapped everything up. There is a potential for a Toy Story 5. It's somewhat left open, so... Yes. If it was up to me, I'd be making Toy Story 5 now. I'd be making it right now, because I definitely want to see more adventures of these, of these toys and these characters. It's just so classic. I wonder, has any franchise actually made a perfect franchise? Every film, absolutely spot on and perfect. Toy Story could have done it. Fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Fantastic. Right, okay, how would I rate it? Oh, well, it was 10. I mean, my score only goes up to 10. I know a lot of people snigger sometimes at my ratings, you know giving really good films four, <laughs> but I can't rate it any less than 10. It's a fucking perfect film, a brilliant animated movie, and this is my film of the year so far. We're halfway through the year, this is my number one film of the year. It's that bloody good. I loved it so much. Fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed my little review of Toy Story 4. I am still a little bit emotional. I am 
excited and happy and just I've got so much buzzing going around in my head at the moment with these characters and these certain scenes in the films and there are characters there are new characters in this film are just going to go on to become classics to be go classic Pixar characters yes fantastic I hope you enjoyed my little review of Toy Story 4 uh, like it by giving it either two thumbs up or two forkies up <laughs> and uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, share and comment if you've seen the film if you liked it if you didn't there's something wrong with you and um, I'll see you all on the next video bye god I love this fucking film